Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's learn how to use the tool. Alright, g'day guys and welcome back today to another Obsidian.md video. Today we're going to be having another look at the series for new starters basically. And what we're going to be diving into today is something called front matter and tags. Now, what are front matter and tags? To put it at the highest level, it is the ability to tag your notes with metadata that can be used to tell you things about your notes. Okay, If anyone's uh, played with digital cameras in the, uh, the new era, you'll probably be aware that you, know, you take a photo and it tags that photo with the location, like the geodata of where that photo was taken, um, the time that the photo was taken, sometimes what it was taken with. Um, right, that's metadata. It's, it's sub data that sits underneath something that could be used to tell you more about that thing. And you can do that with obsidian.md notes and it's incredibly useful. Now, just to put it in your head around why it's incredibly useful, you know, let's say you wanted to create a list of all of the notes that are spells, all right? That's really hard to do unless you have a piece of metadata in your spell notes that says this is a spell. And then it becomes really easy because you're going to say, show me all the notes where the note type is spell and boom, you get a list. And that is absolutely possible with Obsidian.md guys. So just to give you an idea. Now, default out of the box, Obsidian.md does not show you uh, front matter when you're in the live preview mode. If you go into edit mode though, we can see that this section here is what we refer to as front matter. And you can tell it's front matter because it's sitting between a dash 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 and a dash dash dash. Everything between here is what we refer to as front matter. Now, YAML is the more technical name for it, um, so you will hear that referred to as well. Um, but basically, you know, YAML and uh, front matter is interchangeable, um, and you can obviously use that there. Now, YAML is obviously, it's also a bit of a formatting option, so you will see it used in other cases. Now, just for the purposes of this video, all right, because I'm going to go back into um, preview mode quite a few times, what I'm going to do is come down here to settings and go into editor, and I'm going to click this button here for show front matter. And what does that do? It turns on this metadata box so that you can see what exists in my front matter. All right, you can see note type junk there is displayed here as note type junk in this metadata box. It's completely optional for you guys, like you can decide on whether you want this box turned on or not. Um, I personally don't leave it turned on. I have a large amount of front matter in some of my notes, so I find this box to be quite um, you know, obtrusive, it gets in my way, so I've got it turned off by default, but for the purposes of this video, it lets you see what it is that I'm talking about. Also another note, you'll see that I'm manually clicking edit and preview. I do not use the live preview mode, so in settings under editor, there's a live preview mode, which is the default that Obsidian.md starts with. Um, it's the sort of thing that means that as you're typing, pictures are rendering as you're typing and editing and like tables can be seen. I don't like it, all right? I, I go into source mode, all right? I like to be able to click edit, edit my notes and then click back into preview and see what they look like. And it's just a preference thing, all right? So you will see me doing that. Now, so we've got here all of the different type of front matter, all right, that exists. Let's run through quickly and just have a quick look at what some of this actually is. Uh, because some of it, you know, um, some of it will probably be um, quite confusing maybe for you, who knows. All right, we're not all programmers. If we run through here, we've got a dash, dash, dash. This tells the note, and it needs to be at the top of the note, by the way. Um, front matter always has to be at the top. This tells the note that this is front matter. All right, so everything after here is front matter until it gets to the bottom of the front matter, which is another dash, dash, dash. All right, so that should be pretty easy to learn. And then here we've got a note type and junk. And what is that? Well, that is effectively, it's a variable. All right, the variable name is note type. The variable value is junk. And for anyone who's not familiar with the, the terminology of a variable, it's certainly from uh, programming language. Um, basically, a variable is a box a box that you store things in. Now, in this case here, I guess the way to explain this um, in layman's terms would be, it could be a hat box, all right? And you store a hat in a hat box. Um, in this case here, the hat box is called note type, 
and the value that we're storing in that hat box is called junk. All right, and when you know you need a hat, you go to the shelf and you pull down the hat box and you open it up and you have a hat inside, right? The same concept applies here. I wanna know what note type this note is. Well, it's a junk note, right? It's gonna be something I throw away, all right? I might even change that to tutorial later, who knows? Um, but it's the value that I assign to it, so therefore it's a piece of metadata. It tells me something about this note, all right, that lets me understand more about it. And I can use that for all sorts of cool things. Now, just to throw some ideas out there for you guys, if we come down here, and you'll see I've got a very small data view query, and I don't want you to get caught up in, oh, that's cool, how do I write that? Just notice that I'm using the functionality and why I'm using it. I've got a data view query that basically says, I want to show, uh, or make a list, sorry, create me a list um, that has tag one in it, and also where no type equals junk, and you can see here that it starts to automatically create a list for me. So I can have 10 notes where no type equals junk, and it will start to list in here, all right? And just to show you that, let's just go through quickly and just create some new metadata in here in the Untitled 2. We're gonna do junk, uh, sorry, note type. Gonna type junk, all right? And I'm gonna come down here and close off that. All right, so that, that's my front matter. This is now my metadata within that front matter. All right, and if we come here and go backwards, uh, I do need to make sure I tag this with tag one as well because that was part of my requirements. And now we can see untitled two is listed here automatically as well. All right, so as I said, don't get caught up on data view. It's really cool. We'll get there eventually. Um, but as you can see, it's really useful for me because now I can actually go in and say, hey, give me all these notes, all right? Give me all these notes where this equals this, and that's where it's really valuable. Let's jump back in, right? So we've got a variable. A variable is a box where we store a value. That's all that is, all right? These are two other variables, all right? You can call variables whatever you want. That's up to you, all right? Um, oh, there's a, there's a slight rule. We'll get through to that. Um, but these variables all contain one value. Okay, now there are other types of variables and uh, in the programming world they call that an alias, um, or sorry, an array. Um, an array is a variable that can contain more than one value. All right, so here we can see key three has three values. We've got one, two, and three. Key four is a variable that has four, five, and six as the values within them, all right? Um, and then we've got an alias here that's got a note name one, note name two, Fred, and Bob. So an alias, sorry, an array can contain more than one value. Now, there's some specific situations where that might become useful. Uh, for the most part, I tend to use just the, the one value for my variables. Um, but just note that you can do it and note that there's different syntaxes that are okay for doing it, right? So this works, this works, this works, all right? So the same way you can do the same thing, pick the one that makes sense for you, I tend to just use this most of the time because I find that relatively easy. All right, so we've got, um, what do we got? We've got um, front matter now with metadata in it. Now there's two other types of sort of um, front or probably metadata that's important. Um, and that is the alias, all right? Now aliases are hugely useful to those of us in the D&D realm. And why is that you say? Well, let's say that um, let's say, oh, let's say this is a goblin, all right? And the note name is called goblin, let's say, all right? We know we can link to this note by typing in goblin, but what if you have to bring in goblins, all right? You can put an alias in there that says goblins, which will then allow you to actually link to goblins, all right? And it will actually accept that all right, because now we've got an alias. All right, so an alias lets you set other names for your note, which is hugely useful. Let's say you've got a note for a um, blacksmith, for example. All right, and in that blacksmith, you've got Bob and Fred that work. You could have that note called the name of the blacksmith and then have an alias that basically has Bob and Fred's name in it as well. So that way, whenever you come through and type Bob's name, all right, even though you don't have a note for Bob, all right, you can still come in and actually link to Bob, 
All right, that is definitely possible. I reckon Bob exists. Yeah, Bob has his own things in here. So Bob's a pretty terrible example because I use it too much. All right, see how I've typed in Fred and that's pointing to front matter, YAML and tags. That's because that's this note. So that's where it's really useful, guys. Don't forget as well that when you are typing your note, so here I typed in Fred and it's linked to here. If your link is actually using the wrong text, you can put a pipe in and type Fred. Oh, that was terrible. All right, and then when that renders, that will display as Fred instead of showing the actual name of the note. All right, getting a bit sidetracked there, but that is uh, obviously um, really, really hand handy. Um, an alias can be used in a number of different situations um, and having a note that's able to be linked from multiple different names can be useful in all sorts of different examples. All right, the other one that's really useful is tags. And you see down here, I've got tag one, tag two, tag three, and you can see I'm using the hashtag um, hashtag elite video. Yeah, there you go. All right, so you can use your hashtags just like you're doing your Twitters, right? For example, you can make them up um, and you can obviously tag them. There's another um, method here though that can be put in the front uh, matter or in the um, in the, the metadata, sorry. Um, so that is the tags and then tag comma tags, right? So you just do your tags from there. And you'll see here that when we go back into this method, we can see tags is listed with four and five. It's in the metadata of the note, but tags can also be used down here. All right, so there we go. We have variables, we have arrays, we have aliases, and we have tags. And you know, what can we do with them? Let's go a little bit further. If we come down here to settings, all right, come to core plugins, and there's a plugin called tags. All right, now you can see you can set hotkeys for this, so show tags as a hotkey. Um, and basically what that does is enables this prompt over on the right or this pane over on the right. If you can't see that, you may need to expand it out. All right, we can see the tags is down there. And now what we have is we have a list of all the tags that have been used inside of our vault. So if I wanna see the spells, I can click the spells, all right? And that will come down here and list all of the spells that exist in my vault. All right. So as you can see, really quite handy as a way to say, hey, I want to see all of the notes that meet this uh, spell tag. And you know, you could use that to your heart's content. Um, now you can also click on these things. So uh, let's say, you know, I just want to click on uh, Rise of Tiamat. I think that one is, and you can see it's going to give me all of the things that are linked um, with, oh, sorry, I've got, my, I've got my tags here somewhere. Tags, there it is, R-O-T. All right, so um, it lets me kind of quickly navigate to that thing and, and see a list of them. Some people might find that super handy, right? Some people live and breathe by tags. I got to admit, I personally don't use them very often. You won't see it um, in my notes that often. Um, it's just, you know, I just, I, it's not my method of preparing. You know, I've already got linking happening around. I generally don't use search very often, but it is important to know that it is possible. All right, so that's one thing that tags can be useful for. Um, we did obviously come down here and show you a little bit of the data view. Tags can also be used from here, right? So list from tag one. So it will actually go through and search for all of the tag ones that have no type equals junk in this situation. So I'm filtering on both tag one and no type equals junk. All right, if I change this to not junk, we should actually see that this list should not work. And of course it did work. Why? I wonder why that did. So uh, list from tag one where no type, oh, of course, this one's still junk, <laughs> not junk. All right, so if we come back here, now we can see data view, no results from query, right? So the rules are no longer met. I'll take that back to junk, so I need to get rid of it later. And I will change this one back to junk as well. And if we come in here, we'll see data view also comes alive. 
Now, another thing we can do with this is we can uh, make tables, and again, this is in data view, so you can see that there. Um, but there's also this element here, and again, this is all data view, guys, don't get too carried away. But we can do a call for a value from a variable. So equals this dot key two is basically saying this note dot key two dot value two should be displayed here. Does this show value two? Yes, it does. All right, so where do I use this? What is it actually useful for? Um, I use a lot of this, all right? So in my notes, you'll see me commonly using this. And what I do is I tend to have my notes that have a lot of um, sort of things in them. And I'm gonna open up my fifth edition vault here and show you guys um, one of my bigger notes, I guess, so you can see where I'm using this. Um, Again, this really gets into data view, right? It's definitely going down the more complex path. But I prefer that you guys know that I do this now ahead of time than, you know, a month from now when you've made 300 notes and you're going, I wish I'd known that beforehand, right? Because if you'd known it beforehand, you might have made a different decision around what it is that you were going to do. All right. Um, where did I put that note? We're going to show you. Whoa, I got a lot of notes. Shadowdale. That'll be the one. All right, Shadowdale. All right, so here you can see I've got this lovely table over here. It's a wiki style table. If anyone wants to know how I did that, go and check out my video on the ITS theme. Um, it's coming from there. But if we go into edit mode, you'll see that this is an info box, all right? But a large amount of the information is pulled in using the equals this. So actually, I'm not even doing that in this note. No, I'm not. I uh, Maybe shout it out. I, you can actually go through my notes and see where I've practiced different ideas. And you can see it growing. There we go, here we go. All right, so <laughs> Shadowdale, I was starting with the idea. Uh, Castle Aris, I'm getting better with the idea. All right, and you can see that I've got a template that I'm using for all of my uh, locations. All right, and in that template, there's this right-hand table. All right, that's bringing all this information. But instead of me retyping that information in all the areas of the actual node itself, what I do is I go type equals this dot type. Now that's using the data view plugin. And what that does is that brings in, looks up here at the top of the note, type castle. All right, so when we come down here to type, it renders castle, okay? So what that means effectively is I'm storing information in my front matter and I'm referencing it, all right? And what that means is that when I'm creating my notes, and a lot of these have been, um, a lot of my notes are created from bulk data entry um, sometimes, but uh, this one here, I have a template that basically creates this for me. And then what I do is I just come through and I update what I want. All right, so in this case here, I'd press, uh, I'd go new note and I'd press Alt T, which is my templates. Um, I'd probably say location or settlement. Yeah, template settlement, all right. That comes through and adds the front matter that I've pre-populated in here. Um, and then I just go through and update the, the values. All right, and I update it in one place. And that's why this is important, right? One simple location that I can go in and change that information in and then have that flow throughout my note. Um, even so much as here, right? So this heading equals file.name is that, all right? So I don't even type the name of the building uh, name of the location again. I literally just pull that information again and again and again. And what that means is I've now got a note, or a template, sorry, where I can go in and basically just step through this like a table and just fill in the values, right? I just go, note icon, it's a settlement, tags, category, alignment, this, right? And as I go through and do it, my note then comes alive, all right? And it gives me the sections that I need to fill out and it just makes it quicker for me to do things. Now, this is going into the more advanced side of front matter, certainly. But I think it's important that you understand now that this is a potential that you can go down, right? This is a path you can follow before you get too deep down the rabbit hole because you might want to start thinking about this sort of thing now before you get there. So what sort of things are useful to put in front matter? Well, 
I like, uh, well, I always have a note icon, all right? Um, and the reason why I like to have a note icon is because it adds a little icon in front of my notes. Um, now, this is using another plugin. In this case here, let's see if I can remember what it's called. Uh, Supercharge Links, if you want to look into it. All right, I've got a video on that as well. Um, but what I really like about the Supercharge Links plugin is that I can come in and type Aris and it puts that little uh, icon in there for me. All right, where did it go? Aris, it's got the icon, which means every time Aris is mentioned or actually what it is, every time a note that has a note type, or sorry, a note icon of settlement is mentioned, it puts that little settlement icon before it. All right, and I do this with everything like, my magic items have a magic item um, icon, my characters have a character wizard icon, um, my monsters have a little dragon, right? Like, it's quite useful to make uh, links pop in my notes because it draws my eyes to it, gives it um, the attention it needs, so that it just doesn't get lost in the text. All right. Now, as I said, there's another one I like to have, which is um, note type, and I can see I've got type castle in here. Um, I think note type, Probably what I've missed on here. All right, and this might be oh, what would I call this? I, I call it a location. I've kind of used type castle. All right, but I probably have a note type equals location, um, and that would just allow me to have that sort of categorization in there. Um, tags I don't use. I'll be honest. Like that's coming from a an import that I had. Um, a lot of this is just information though. All right, that's all it is. It's information that I want to regurgitate through my notes um, over and over again. All right, so that way I don't have to type it. So instead of typing, it's just got equals this dot file name equals this dot type equals this dot size. Right, it's all just referencing up here and doing that. Now it's worth calling out here that you can do mass with some of this as well. All right, so you can see here that I'm bringing in um, exhaustion level from another note. Um, and it's also important here that you understand that you can also use metadata from other notes in your calculations in your current note. So there's all sorts of cool things, and this is all data view, guys, like it's getting deep into it. But you can sort of start to understand and see how it might be useful for you, I think, for you to do something like that. So you could use your tagging, you could use your front matter, all right? They're all going to be obviously ways that you can do it. Um, to give you an idea of where we might use the um, the alias in here, have I got alias? I don't, but we might put a, an alias in here. So Aris might also be referred to as Castle Aris. Okay, and if we come in here to this note, and what we'll do is we'll just do Castle Aris. All right, you can see Castle Aris is then linking. All right, and you can see that when I linked this time, it actually renamed it for me, so it worked properly. And now Castle Aris links to Aris. Okay, so that's where the alias is really, really useful. And look, honestly, guys, that's kind of it. All right, it's a very simple concept, but incredibly powerful. And if you spend the time now looking at your notes and determining what you want them to look like, you know, you can do some cool things. Now, I want to throw this out there as well. So data view can be used to make tables. Okay. Now where that becomes quite cool, also quite dangerous, depending on how big it is that you're going to run this thing. Struggling to turn up here. Um, where have I done this? Uh, I've done this in lots of places, but let's have a look at the player handbook. All right, if we have a look here, all right, I've got my spells. I've got all of this sort of front matter data, as as you'll see here. All right, now if we come here to the player handbook, we're just going to add in some of these. So I'm just going to paste this here as a reference point just so I can use it. Uh, what I'm going to do is just come in here and just grab this data view table. Yeah. 
Alright, so we're going to make a data view table. Uh, we're going to bring in the name. We're going to bring in the level, the casting time, the range. Alright. Um, we're going to bring a wearing. I'll bring that from here. Where spell source equals player handbook. Actually, I'm going to do this in where school equals conjuration. Alright, because this is more useful. It's going to show us all the conjuration spells. Let's just check to see if that worked. It's going to think a little bit. And boom, look at that. So we now have a data view table. Yes, data view is insanely cool. You can pick your jaws up off the floor. Um, it does take a little bit of time to load, but by having front matter, right, in your notes already ready to use, how useful is that? Because now we have an A to Z, and we can change that sorting by the way, we can define that, um, table that's now linking to all of those spells, all right, showing all of the conjuration spells, all right, um, and you could probably go further, I think, like, you know, if you wanted to go down the path of where classes, it can, well, where classes contains this, because it's actually a multiple one, um, you can do that, all right? So that's just a really good example of why front matter can be really, really cool in your notes, okay? Take the time, go through and set it up. Um, I will say that I don't use a whole heap of these in massive levels, right? Like, when I first started, I put front matter in everything, and at the front of every monster book, I had one of these tables that pulled in every monster from that book. Um, my player handbook pulled in every spell from the player handbook, every magic item, right? Data view does take a long time to process those notes, all right? So just be aware that the larger you make your queries, the longer it's going to take your note to render, all right? And sometimes that can be, you know, quite annoying. If we go back here, how long does it take? One, uh, two seconds there. So that's actually not too bad. I've made ones that freeze my system up for like 30 seconds, all right? Which is cool because it's a really big list, um, but it's very destructive and disruptive in the game. So I tend to not to do it anymore. All right, but anyway, that is front matter, all right? And as you can see, that can be incredibly useful. Um, it's just a handful of uses for you to see whether or not you can find um, something that works for you. Um, but I highly recommend you look into it. Um, and you don't need to, as I said, you don't need to worry about learning data view yet, but start to think about your front matter. Now, I will say this, don't go down the path of having lots of complex text. All right, this is the cat that sat on the mat, right? That's going to be an issue, all right? It worked, right? But there might be some problems later. What you can do though is actually put it in um, little um, commas there, all right? So it actually defines it as a singular piece of text. So if you are gonna do complex things with weird characters and stuff, uh, stick it between um, some apostrophes um, or quotation marks, sorry, so that you know the system knows that that's one grouping of text. But just be aware that, you know, if your text that you're pasting in has another quotation mark, right? It's going to cause you issues in your front matter and make it invalid, okay? So just be aware of that. So that's, I generally like, my front matter is for usually like single word values, all right? Or I might even do something like junk underscore note, all right? Because that's a single value, it's easy, it's clean. When you start going into lots and lots of text, which is called a string um, in the, the programming world, like if it's got all those special characters, you're gonna break the YAML formatting and that's gonna be an issue. All right, so just be aware of that one. All right, outside of that though, it's a simple topic, okay? Um, but very, very powerful functionality that opens the door to a lot of other things. So understand it now, have a think about what it is you might use it for um, and prepare yourself, right? Lay your foundation and start getting that ready for it because um, it's easy to do it now than it is to do it 
a month, a week from now when you've made 300 notes. Um, and yeah, yeah, there we go. All right, so that has been um, that has been front matter. Um, that has been YAML. That has been tagging. That has been aliases. Hopefully, that has been useful for you. Um, if you are enjoying these videos, please do like and subscribe using the buttons below. Um, I'd love to say a massive and huge shout out to all of my patrons. Thank you so much. I hope you all had an amazing Christmas. Um, I'm following closely the people that are doing this Dungeon 23 thing. That sounds really cool. Um, let me know in the Discord channel if anyone wants to jump on board with that. We might have a bit of a play. Who knows? I'm down. I'm down. I'm pretty busy, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to put my effort into it, but maybe we could have a group effort. Who knows? Anyway, guys, have a great day. I'll speak to you on the forums and the socials, and uh, we'll see you next video. Thank you.